CCTV Camera World is proud to provide support for products purchased from our website. If you purchased your product from another vendor, please contact the vendor you purchased from for further assistance. Here we're going to show you how to connect that controller to this camera over the network while still being able to watch the camera through this NVR or DVR. So we've got some network connections going out of this controller, going to a PoE switch, a cable going out of this camera into that switch. This is not a PoE camera, but it could be. It could be a PoE, PTZ, or anything, as long as it's connected to a switch, has the right IP address for both of them to talk to each other over the same network, including this recorder being on the same network. The aim of this video is not to show you everything, it's to show you how to get this controller to talk to the camera. This camera has an IP address of what? 109. So it's 192.168.1.109. I'm going to flash it across the screen now. This controller has an IP address of what when you take it out of the box? Uh, it's set to DHCP, which means it automatically gets an IP address out of the box. So we're going to set it to an, uh, an IP address of 112. So it's going to be 192.168.1.112. So I'm going to zoom in here and have you see how we set that on the controller. Okay, first you're going to hit enter to log in. Uh, the username is admin. The default password is going to be 68, so it's 888. 888 eight, eight, and then you're gonna hit the enter key to finish logging in now there's zone control and menu setting zone control is to control a zone uh, a zone being a ptz an nvr or any camera or system that you have added to your keyboard so in order to add a zone to our keyboard we first need to go down to menu setting and then first set an ip address so that's in the system setting or one so you can hit enter or press the one button and then here we have our time settings, NTP, which tells the keyboard how to get time, and then there's network. So network is where we're gonna set the IP address. So we can either hit three or hit enter by going down to the three button. As I said, DHCP is set by default out of the box. So we're gonna head, go ahead and turn it off by toggling the joystick to the left. So I just did a left toggle here. It's gonna turn it on and off as I do that. And then I need to hit enter. It's gonna turn DHCP off. Here was the IP address that it was set to. So it was 192.168.1.201. And as my colleague explained, we're gonna set it to 112. Now, usually subnet mask you can leave alone. If you know what a subnet mask is, you're gonna know what to set anyway. Leave it default 255, 255, 255, if you don't know what a subnet mask is. Down, if you go down, again, I'm just going down on the keyboard to get between these menus. You're gonna see the gateway. Now, this is usually gonna be 192.168.1.1 if you are in this type of network. If you're not in this type of network, this is the IP address for your router, whether it's 192.168.1.254 or 10.1.1.1 if you have a Comcast modem or router or any variation depending on what network you are in. Make sure that you set the gateway to whatever your router's IP address is. And in our case, it is 192.168.1.1. Last but not least is the port number three quadruple seven that's standard across all of our equipment you're going to want to leave that as default and hit enter to successfully save that if we go back into this menu we'll see dhcp is off we hit enter again we'll see our ip address of 1.12 was successfully saved i'm just going to hit the escape key to back out of there to this menu so we've gone ahead and set a network ip address that is compatible with our network which means it can talk to the camera over the network now it's time to add the camera so i'm going to escape back out of this menu Again, we were in the system menu, and then we're gonna go. So this section, there's a second section of this video. We're gonna show you how to connect this controller to your camera. What we already showed you is how to set an IP address on this controller so it can talk to the camera on the same network. Now it needs a zone setup, a camera setup inside of a zone so it can talk to that camera to move it. We're gonna do that now. All right, so we backed out of the system menu where the network settings were. And here we have zone, which is two. So we can hit the two button or hit enter when we go down to two on the joystick. So here there's some important things to understand. We have the ID. So the ID is the number that you're gonna enter into zone control to control whatever zone you want to control. In this case, we're just gonna use the ID of zero because it is the default ID. The asterisk next to it, I believe just means that it is the default ID. Uh, we can go down to name. Again, I'm just using the joystick up and down to get through the menus here. The name, you can name it whatever you like. Um, in this case, uh, we're going to leave it blank. You could, for example, type in PTZ um, by using the shift key to get through the different 
the different uh, modes here, the different keyboard modes. So if you can see, as I'm pressing the shift button, it's going through the different modes here and I can name it whatever I'd like for the sake of simplicity. Like I said, I'm just gonna leave it alone or just name it PTZ for the sake of the video. So I named the PTZ PTZ or this zone PTZ. Then the type is very important as well. By default, out of the box, it should be on NVR and net for the first zone, ID zero. And this is very important. So this would be if you had an NVR with several PTZs. However, in this example, we are just connecting a single PTZ. So we're gonna change the type from NVR to SD or speed dome, another term for PTZ. And then link is another important thing. You're gonna wanna change it from COM 485 to net. Essentially, all this means is that you're looking over the network rather than using an RS-45 connection. Now I'm gonna go down. It's very important to note there are several menu windows here. So this would be men menu window one. And this is menu window two, where we actually need to set the IP address for whatever zone we're looking for. In this case, again, it is a PTZ camera and we have it set to 109. So I just need to enter in 109 and this would be the IP address for whatever your PTZ is set to. Port number, again, three quadruple seven, you're gonna to wanna to leave that alone. And then step, you can leave it as default as eight. Then rule, you can leave it as the default DH-2. Username is gonna be admin or whatever username you have set on your camera. And then the password again is gonna be whatever username you have set on your PTZ. I'm just gonna go ahead and enter in our default password here from Avalonix. Again, I'm using the shift key to shift in between the different keyboard modes. It's gonna be one zero lowercase i, capital L. We've gotta go back to lowercase. And it's gonna be T, X. And it's almost like a touch tone phone where you actually have to press on each key. It's called T9. You have to press on each key to get it between different letters. So one important thing is when you go from X to Y, to get to the next letter space, you have to press the joystick to the right to go over to the next character. Yep. And then we're gonna hit the enter key. And uh, note, this is the bottom of the menu, very important. So again, this, there's like three different menus here. Make sure that you go through and configure each menu and you understand which each of these settings do. So again, to recap, we named the PTZ, we changed the type, we changed the link, we went ahead and set the IP address. Again, this is the IP address for the camera you wanna control port number we left alone, step we also left alone, rule we left alone at DH-2, username just so happened to be admin, and then we entered in the password for the camera. So I'm gonna hit enter to save all of those settings. So successful. Now in order to actually control the PTZ, now we have our system set up so the keyboard can communicate over the network. We've added it under the zone setting, so it's now at zone and it's zone zero. So in order to access zone zero, I need to hit the escape button. It's gonna go back to the main menu and we go into zone control by using the joystick up and then hitting the enter key. ID zero, again, the default ID. If you had another ID, you would type in that number for that ID that you configured. Mine is ID zero. Hit enter, as it says device SD or speed dome and connecting. It was successfully able to connect to our camera. So now if I use the keyboard, the camera will move. So pan to the right pan to the left. If I twist it, it's going to zoom. You might hear that. One second. You can actually see the lens coming out. Keep doing that. Yep. The lens is right over there. Okay. okay. And then you can tilt up or tilt up and down. And then last but not least, if you want to control any of the wipers, if your camera has a wiper or anything like that, then you want to use the aux button or function button, actually, the function button, or FN. Right there. Okay. So this joystick is made to work with this PTZ or our PTZ, so that's why the function button actually executes that function. There are other PTZs that you may try to use with our controller, there's no guarantee they'll work, or this controller will work with your NVR. While our controller does work with our NVR and our cameras, compatibility is always a concern when you're using third-party equipment. And the lights, let me, let's finish this video by just explaining to you the lights that are on this controller here. A lot of people look at the lights and get fixated on there. This is just power. Once you plug in the power supply, it's a 12 volt 
you'll get that. This is telling you that actually transmitting over the network. Uh, it's actually basically the blinking lights on a switch. So that's what these are. And the net light just tells you it's connected to the network. You completely ignore all of these. If you were using a USB, we have a different video on how to use our controllers using smart PSS with a Windows computer. This would turn on then. Uh, this controller definitely is a very high-end controller. It has not only your R RJ45 jack for network connectivity, but it also has these COM ports and a USB port to connect to your computer. And even an RS-232 to plug into a directly into a uh, old-fashioned uh, DVR as well. Hopefully you found this video useful. Thanks for watching. Please don't forget to like the video and subscribe as well. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.